Well, hey everybody, it's Friday. We are gonna do some more really fun activities and today we're in the kitchen. The lighting's not so great, so I'll do my best to make sure you can see what we're doing. But we're gonna talk today about physical versus chemical changes. That's the sciencey stuff we're gonna do. But we're also gonna make some bath bombs at the end, which I think will be fun. It's also kind of a sciencey thing, um, but it's also something that's fun to do. So i um, waiting for some of you guys to jump on. Um, and so I wanted to talk to you guys about this because I think it's really kind of fun as we're going about our day, talking about how things change. Now, um, we wanna talk about the difference between a physical change versus a chemical change. And one of the things I wanna start with is water. Okay, I have two, I have a glass of water here, and then I have a glass of ice here. Um, think about what happens when water turns to ice. We stick it in the, or the freezer, and we let the ice um, sit there for a while, and then all of a sudden the water sit, and all of a sudden we get these little ice cubes. What's happening is heat is being removed from the water, and so the, the water molecules actually slow their movement down and form a solid. Is this still H2O water? Yes, it is. Can I change it back to this form? Yes, I can. Just leaving it like this, right? If we let ice sit out or we add heat to it, um, it will start to melt and it becomes liquid water. Now what happens when we heat this up even more? We actually get steam coming up and steam is also H2O, isn't it? It's gaseous water. All three of those are phases and those are physical changes. It means the, the, the actual molecule or atom doesn't change what it is. So um, this is still H2O, this is H2O, and then if we have steam in the air, it's also H2O, but it's just changed its phases. So a phase change is called a physical change. It does not change what that molecule is made up of. All right, so, so that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. Now I wanna talk about a chemical change. We do chemical changes all the time. So I have a, um, a skillet, it's kind of difficult to see because it's black just like my stove top, but I have a skillet right here and I'm heating it up. And then I have an egg. This is a raw egg. I'm gonna put it in my heated skillet and I'll show you what happens. You probably already know what's gonna happen, don't you? Okay, we'll let that sit for a minute. Think about what's gonna happen when we put the egg on the hot skillet. It starts to cook, right? If you wanna make some eggs for breakfast, that's what we're doing. Some of you may have had eggs for breakfast. You created a, a chemical change, not a physical change. And here's what's happening. The molecules in the egg material are readjusting, they're breaking apart, they're reassembling in other ways. And um, thinking about like a Lego model, I love to use Legos as an example of molecules because you could take each Lego shape would be considered an atom. Molecules are made up of more than one, kind, one, more than one atom. And so you can put them together, but then that makes a molecule. But then you can take your Legos apart and rearrange them to form a different shape. That's a different molecule. That's a chemical change. It looks different, it behaves different. So my, my uh, egg is cooking, and you can see things are starting to change just visually, right? It's turning white. Um, that's because the albumin, which is the protein, the white part of the egg, is changing its form, and it's a chemical reaction, a chemical change. One of the best ways to identify a chemical change versus a physical change is that chemical changes can't be easily reversed, if at all. Think about this egg. Can I uncook it? Can I make it back to the same material it was when it was in the shell? No, actually, it's been done in the lab, believe it or not. It's, it takes all kinds of major steps to do. You can technically uncook an egg, but it's really, really hard to do. It's because you have to undo all those Lego pieces and rebuild them back the way they came um, originally. And so um, changing up the molecules, when molecules change to other kinds of molecules with different properties, different behaviors, different uh, ways they behave in the presence of other molecules. That's what we're calling a chemical change, again, versus a physical change um, where the molecule is still that molecule. It hasn't, uh, the Lego pieces haven't been taken apart. All right, so let me flip my egg. Certainly don't wanna waste this guy. All right, someone's gonna have that for lunch today at our house. <laughs> okay, so, so this is a chemical change, a chemical change. It has changed chemically um, to a different uh, molecule, all right? All right, so the next thing I wanna show you guys is a fun activity to do. Um, do this with your folks. This is something that you gotta do with your parents' kids. Um, this is actually, it's looking really, really dark. I'm gonna 
run and turn on my light in the kitchen, make it a little bit brighter so you can see. So hang on just a second. I'm coming. And I'm back. Okay, that was fast. Okay, so hopefully you can see this a little bit better. I'll still hold it up so you can see it. But we're gonna take some acetone. Acetone is a um, chemical that you probably don't have inside the house. You might have it in the garage. Um, this is something you really need to do with um, a parent, kids. That's why I'm wearing an apron. Um, it is a solvent, meaning it's used to dissolve things. It's in nail polish. Sometimes nail polish remover is, um, can be, has some acetone in it. Um, it may not be pure acetone, but I'm gonna take some acetone and I'm gonna pour it into this tray. And then we're gonna see something happen. I'm gonna put some styrofoam in here. I have some styrofoam egg containers. Now this stuff, um, it evaporates very easily, very rapidly. So it's got some, um, it's got some aromas that you just don't wanna like put your head in it, okay? All right, so here's my container of acetone. I'm gonna take just some styrofoam and I'm gonna stick it in. And I wanna want you guys to watch what's happening here. Can you see it start to disappear? Where's it going? I'll let it sit for a little bit longer. Watch what's happening. Is it, it's melting. It's, it's, it's going away. Let me put some more in here. Here, I'll set it down for a second. Okay, I'm going to take the phone off and let you guys see it even better. I'm stick these in here. All right. There you go, now you can see. What's happening? It's like they're disappearing into nothingness. And we can keep putting more in. You can do this with packing peanuts. You can do this with um, styrofoam cups. Pretty much anything that is styrofoam. You have some styrofoam takeout. You can do it with styrofoam takeout containers. All right, what's happening here? First of all, let me ask you, is this a chemical or a physical um, let me put you back in my thing here. Is it a chemical or physical reaction? Well, it looks very different than what it started out as. Woo, almost dropped you. There we go. Okay, so it looks very different, doesn't it? I have a piece that I had stuck in there earlier. This used to be styrofoam. Now what? Was this a chemical change? Well, it looks very, very different, doesn't it? So you might think, and can we undo it? Actually, we really can't undo this, but this is a physical change. What's happening here is styrofoam is made up of um, very long uh, molecules, and those molecules are filled and, and uh, set up in a way that there's lots and lots of air inside. So when it's in this, this acetone, it actually starts to dissolve. In the same way that sugar uh, dissolves in water, it's still sugar in there because you can taste it. If you dissolve sugar in water, the sugar molecules are just tinier and tinier and tinier, but they're still sugar molecules. So you take a sip of sugar water, it tastes sweet because sugar is still sweet and it's still sugar molecules mixed in with the water molecules. That's what dissolving is. That's a physical change. Well, this is dissolved as well. It's just that the molecules are relaxed enough and broken up enough so that the air that's packed inside here is released. And th this is actually made of the material that's left behind. What we're seeing here is just basically the goo. There we go, look at that. Woo, okay, that stuff's pretty gross looking. It's just the styrofoam plastic minus the foam part, minus the air molecules, okay? Be careful doing this if you wanna do it at home. It's very easy to do, it's very fun to do, but just be aware that you wanna have a ventilated area because it, the acetone is pretty, um, toxic in its smell and um, you're actually creating some air escaping in a way that causes those aromas to go higher. This stuff's going to eventually just evaporate if I let it sit out and then I'll just throw away that plastic. But this is a physical change. There you go, you can see it. Pretty interesting to see that's the plastic of our styrofoam. Okay, so that's a little bit about chemical and physical changes. I'm gonna move this over we're not done using our egg containers though, because now I wanna do a little, a little craft or an activity with you guys. We're going to do, uh, we're gonna make bath bombs. 
and we're going to do it using stuff you have around the house um, and we're also going to talk about because when you use a bath bomb it's actually a chemical reaction in the bathtub but it's a safe one so you can stick a bath bomb in the bathtub and um, there's lots of different recipes that you can use um, you can find them online um, and so if what I'm doing doesn't fit with the ingredients that you have look online and find some there should be some available that you would be able to um, to use what you have some of the basics that you probably just have um, on hand so uh, this is not to cause you to have to say well we got to go out and buy this or have to go and order this you can use a lot of things you have at hand at, um, just on hand so we're gonna do um, baking soda is our first component this is one of the major components of a bath bomb baking soda and I'm going to add eight tablespoons of baking soda into a container one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, this is actually going to be a fun one. And add, you can do some extra stuff too with this. Let me tip it so you can see better. Um, a lot of the ingredients, the dry ingredients we're using, are white. And um, it may be interesting to show your kids how there's different colors of white. Um, you can take each of the ingredients and put them in a little container first, separate. Go into a dimly lit room and ask them if those containers, if the material in those containers is the same color. In dim light, a lot of these white colors are gonna look exactly the same. And then come into a bright light and you'll notice that there's slight changes, slight alterations. And so light helps us to see what colors are because Colors that come into our eyes are reflections of that light bouncing off of an object. We can talk about light in another um, live later on. But okay, so I have my eight tablespoons of the um, baking soda. The next thing we're going to do is four tablespoons of cornstarch. Cornstarch is another fun science ingredient. We've ever made um, a non-Newtonian fluid with this. I think it's called gloop or glop or something too. We use four tablespoons of this. Okay, and then we're gonna get four tablespoons of citric acid, which is a, um, it's basically dried lemon juice. All right, I have that already measured out so we're not sitting here. Again, if you don't have citric acid at home, there's other recipes you can look up online and find stuff that, don't, that doesn't have it. This actually just makes a nicer um, bath bomb when you use it. And then the last one is four tablespoons of Epsom salts. Epsom salts, like this stuff right here, okay. Okay, I've got that measured out as well. And then we're gonna take a whisk and we're just gonna whisk the ingredients together, the dry ingredients together, just to make sure they're well blended and all the little lumps are out. This is chemistry, guys. This is fun. This is chemistry, it's a craft, and it's fun. Okay, so we have our dry ingredients. Now we're going to mix some wet ingredients together. For the wet ingredients, I want um, about one, um, maybe one and a half teaspoons of water, which is half a tablespoon. Actually, I'm gonna use my teaspoon measure. Got a teaspoon. You may have to adjust a little bit. I'm gonna use just a little bit less than one and a half teaspoons of water. We don't wanna add too much um, liquid to our solid because we want it to be just um, dry enough that it will pack, but not like mud, like Play-Doh even. Okay, we're also gonna add some essential oil. You do not have to use essential oils, um, but if you want to, it adds a nice fragrance when you use these in the bath. So I'm gonna add about five drops of essential oils. You can add five to 10. One, two, three, four, five. Mm, it smells nice, but be careful handling this stuff. You don't want to handle this stuff without any, uh, without hand protection as well. I'm going to put gloves on when I finally mix all this together. Okay, so I have my essential oil. Um, I want to add about one and a quarter teaspoons of oil, just regular oil. I like to use olive oil. You can use coconut oil. Um, coconut oil is um, it oftentimes is solid if it's cool outside. So you have to melt it first, like just a little bit on the stove. One and a half one and a quarter teaspoon, there we go, of olive oil. Again, you can use coconut oil, either one works great. Okay, and then I'm gonna add just a, a couple of drops of food color, and I think I'm gonna make these, um, let's make them blue. 
I think blue shows up better. You can use whatever. You don't have to add food coloring if you don't want. Just one to two drops of food coloring. Okay, now we're gonna mix this up. And I'm gonna slowly pour this into my dry ingredients. But before I do, I just wanna put some gloves on. I don't want blue hands. And if any of those drops of essential oil, if it's pure oil, I don't wanna get it on my hands as well. It could be pretty caustic. We're about done. This is really fun though. I hope you guys try some of this at home. Um, again, use what you have. There's all kinds of um, great recipes out there and it's something you can make that's productive. Your kids will have fun with it. Okay, and so I'm gonna slowly pour this in. And as I do, I'm gonna mix as well. It might make a little fizzy sound. Just pour it more slowly if it does because it's actually reacting just a little bit. And I'll show you what's going on. I'll lift this up so you can see. it in. You can use a whisk if you want. We want the, um, the moisture to get incorporated in. These bath bombs, if you're just tuning in, these we're making some bath bombs. Once you um, make these and prepare them um, and use them in the tub, you will be having a bath in a chemical reaction. Not a physical reaction, a chemical reaction because what's gonna happen is it's gonna to start to fizz and release carbon dioxide gas. We've done some stuff with carbon dioxide gas already in the last little bit, last couple of weeks. If you guys are enjoying this, let me know. Let me know if you'd like us to keep doing this. Okay, this is a little bit dry. You want it to get to the consistency where when you squish it in your hand, it kind of stays. It is, but I want it just a little bit, just a little bit um, more moist. And I'm not going to dump water in because that'd be too much. So I'm just going to put my hand in some water. Just get my glove wet. Just add some drops. You could use a spray bottle. Again, we want this to be a little bit moldable so that when we put it in our molds, it'll dry nicely. I think I'm just about there. One more hand dip into some water like this. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. When I squish it like this, can you see how it kind of forms? Okay, so now you can you want to put it in a mold. Now there's all kinds of molds you can get. You can buy molds, you can buy those spherical ones. Um, you can use a muffin tin um, to, you want to, might want to grease the muffin tin just so it's easier to get it out. Just grease it with a little bit of coconut oil or olive oil. And then, but I'm gonna use what we have. I'm gonna use egg cartons, okay? Egg cartons are fun, useful, and we're just gonna pack it in to the egg carton, like this. And you wanna pack it really tight. You wanna get as much air out as possible. And we'll make these nice little bath pucks. And then once these, or once you get them all packed in, you wanna let it sit to dry couple of days, um, definitely wait a couple of days before you try popping one out. Um, but once they're completely dry, gin you can handle them gingerly so they don't break apart. You can store them in a container and then when you're ready to take a bath, you just pop one or two of these in with you and you'll have a nice, nice, lovely smelling bath bomb. And you can be thinking of the chemistry that's happening around you because you are taking a bath in a chemical reaction. All right, so that's what we're, um, that's basically what we've done today. We've talked about chemical reactions, we've talked about the difference between a chemical reaction and a physical reaction. Um, remember, we, we fried an egg, can't unfry an egg, and that's a chemical reaction. 
We talked about the physical changes where something um, can melt or something can boil. That's a physical change. Right now we're having a physical change happening with my ice liquid or ice water H2O turning to liquid water H2O. And then we also made our really amazing physical change of dissolving a whole bunch of styrofoam into the, and let, let, being left behind with just this little bit of uh, material left afterwards. So um, have fun doing some of this. Let me know if you do. Take some pictures, stick them in the comments. If you have any questions, feel free to pop those in the comments and I would love to try to answer those. Um, I hope to come back next week and we, I'm thinking it would be, might, might be fun to do some marine biology stuff because I think that would be really engaging and uh, there's lots of activities we can do talking about ocean animals and some other neat features. If you like that, give me a, give me a thumbs up, let me know. Um, I'm, I'd love to, um, to do whatever it is you guys are interested in doing, what your kids are interested in doing and try to incorporate other subjects, other things. Always try some kind of a hands-on whatever we're doing as well. So thanks again for joining me. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, and I will see you again Monday.